So some of you might have seen the poster uh, that Clinton and I um, showed at the Indigenous Content um, Symposium. I've got two versions. This version um, shows the departure of famous Australian explorers, Burke and Wills. Now, when I was in primary school, we, we learned about Burke and Wills. There's two details. I knew the name Burke and Wills, and I knew there's a town called Burke. Um, but what I didn't know is just how much supplies they took with them. They didn't just take uh, camels and horses. They had bullocks and they had like, vast teams of supplies. And uh, the oral tradition of Aboriginal descendants recalls the horror of the tribespeople as the expedition was making its way through with all these oxen like, and water holes that had been used by the traditional people for 25,000 years, suddenly all polluted, for, maybe for years to come, trodden down with hooves and manure and just absolutely polluted. So they were just horrified at this. Now, Burton Wills uh, were the first to uh, record in writing that they made it to the Gulf of Carpentaria from the south, they started from Melbourne. And, but they made it back to Cooper Creek, which is in uh, southern Queensland. Now, the Yarra, uh, Yarrawanda people had lived in Cooper Creek region for at least 25,000 years, maybe longer. Um, now, the Yarrawanda people provided Burke, Wills and King with fish and bread made from the spore cap of Nardu. The reason they did that was that um, Burke, Wills and King were desperate. They'd run out of supplies, and they're famous because they made it back to Cooper Creek, to um, what's called the Dig Tree, and they found that their base camp team they'd left behind months ago had just departed the same morning. So they stayed in Cooper Creek um, region for about a month, but their supplies were dwindling, and so they relied more and more on Aboriginal kindness, and King was trying to resist that, didn't want to trade, didn't want to get much help. So they tried to find their own um, supplies, but eventually they got weaker and weaker. Burke eventually died, then, uh, and Wills died, and uh, King was on the verge of death, but the Yarrawundra people found him and uh, look, started to look after him. With their knowledge of the landscape, they m managed to somehow not only provide for their own families, but they managed to care for a very sick um, European man for months until he was rescued. <laughs> by Europeans, you know. So this story makes you, makes you think that um, even though they're all eating from the fame, same food source, Burke and Wills didn't have the background knowledge through research that the Arawindra people had developed over many generations. And so they, they died um, a sorry death. But the Arawindra people had, had enough knowledge and, and love for the land and even the willingness to care for this invader, to look after him and make sure he, he um, didn't die, but he, he, he lived on. He actually was strong enough to make the trip back to Melbourne when the, uh, the other Europeans came back. And he lived in Melbourne for another 10 years. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to list the similarities and differences between Yarrawundra living skills and 2015 contemporary research skills. I'm going to give you Two minutes when I say go. On your mark, you've got two minutes. Get set, go. Probably fairly quickly, I hit us with similarities. I'm going to record a few, but I'm not going to record that many. Thank you. Okay, we went for um, words. So we had um, context, um, curiosity, passion, respect. Relational language barriers. Language barriers. Experimentation. Experimentation. And okay. Can we write both? Yes. Sir. Learning from accidents. Recorded. Recorded. Nice word. Um, goal oriented. Goal oriented. Yes. yes. Beautiful. As we know it. No libraries. No books as we know it. No books. No search engines or internet. Uh huh. <laughs> What did you just do in that whole, there's an education gap activity? What skills did you use? Think about what you did, but the skills you used and call them out. Just throw them at me. Group work. Group work. Let's go for the fourth one down. Okay. Group work. Yep. Keep going. Evidence-based. Evidence-based. So we'll go for the third one. Ideas generation. 
ideas generation. So this is the very standard way we encourage people to introduce students to the facets of the research skill development framework. We call this um, a deriving activity, where in your own words, you see the framework emerge in front of your own eyes because of what you've done and what you've contributed. So we use the word embark. Um, if you ever think of, uh, you know, when you think of better words than these, we're always open to improving and changing. But the verb embark is a bit like a, it's a metaphor for a journey. Then just like you in that short activity, we had to find information that's relevant to the task or generate data. But you're also drawing on existing knowledge. You're drawing on your, your memory banks of what you knew in the past, if you knew much about backward wills or Aboriginal culture or people. Or if you didn't, you know, Google is a good place. You know, so let's find out what's, what's going on there. So students are going through that process of finding what is relevant, what's important. But then the big one, I think, for both um, university education, but also primary and secondary education, is that we have to evaluate information and say, well, is this trustworthy? Should I believe this Google search I just did that talked about Burke, you know? Why would I trust that? Or why would I even trust my memories? So the, the, our need in 2015 onwards is to help students not be gullible consumers, but to be discerning users of information. And also, not only users of, of others' information, but also discerning generators of information as well, where they're developing data. Um, sometimes that happens in a brainstorming activity, but certainly like in lab environments, or interviews contexts, or surveys, or various uh, data generation tools. We have to be discerning, saying, is this an outlier I leave out? So the critique, uh, the comparison and contrast. Are we, is, is there an evidence base, and is that evidence trustworthy? Um, and then the reflection on the whole process. What's going on here? But once you've evaluated and reflected, just quickly, you have to organise things in discipline-appropriate ways. Um, I'm just curious, reading your research skill development, why evaluation and reflection comes before organising and managing and analysing and synthesising. I would yeah. suggest that the sequence it's, it's only there to be adapted and to make sure it works in your context. So Dorothy's pen, got a Pentagon version where there's no sequence at all. It's actually, it's, there's no linearity whatsoever. This linearity can be helpful for some students to learn the process, but frequently the linearity is not the process at all.